Amanda from Ponte's Books here to discuss the historical tidbit for chapter 12. Chapter 12's historical tidbit is based on a <clears throat> pretty famous um, landmark that still stands in London, but that one is actually less famous, uh, and that is the London Bridge. So when you hear London Bridge, uh, there's a couple things that a lot of people think of. Some people think of the nursery rhyme um, song, you know, London Bridge is falling down. I'm not necessarily diving into specifically the background of that song, um, but we'll be looking at the London Bridge. Also, people will think of often modern day what's called the London Tower Bridge, um, which is kind of the fancy draw drawbridge that is very iconic and lots of people take pictures of in London. That is not this bridge. There are different uh, bridges. Um, it has never been that bridge. That's called the London Tower Bridge. So let's dive in and look at the history of this bridge a little bit. So in The Prince and the Pauper, we get quite a lot of description. So I actually included some of it here, but this isn't even all of it. So it said, um, so this is at the beginning of chapter 12. This is um, Edward has kind of been rescued by um, Miles Hendon while he was, I guess, had a mob kind of attacking him while he was claiming to be uh, the prince. And so he rescued him and now they're on their way to uh, where Miles is staying, which is on London Bridge. So we get this description. Our friends threaded their way slowly through the throngs upon the bridge. This structure, which had stood for 600 years and had been a noisy and populous thoroughfare at that time was a curious affair for a closely packed rank of stores and shops with family quarters overhead stretched along both sides of it from one bank of the river to the other. The bridge was a sort of town to itself. It had its inns, its beer houses, its bakeries, its haberdasheries, its food markets, its manufacturing industries, and even its church. It looked upon the two neighbors which it linked together, London and Southwark, as being well enough as suburbs, but not otherwise particularly important. So it goes on to continue to describe kind of life and like the culture of living on this bridge, but obviously I didn't want to include all of that in here. Um, but a lot of these details that are explained are very accurate to what the bridge would have been at the time of King Henry VIII and Edward VI. So going back to what was kind of the history of this bridge. So originally it was a Roman crossing um, that was built in 50 AD. And that crossing was likely destroyed by uh, Boudicca, not sure on the pronunciation, who was a queen of the British Celtic Iceni tribe um, who conquered uh, the Romans uh, there. So then that bridge would have likely been rebuilt um, because it was just practical to go across uh, the Thames River that cuts through there. Um, and then Roman rule ended in the early fifth century, which means that original bridge probably would have fallen into disrepair, but there was a bridge um, that was built in, you know, roughly the same area. Uh, I have no idea how you would pronounce this name, uh, Althered, uh, the Unready. Uh, and so built a bridge later in, in the late 10th century. And then uh, a Viking leader named Olaf Haraldsson probably pulled that bridge down. So then a Saxon bridge went up, which was rebuilt by King Will William uh, in 1066. And that, that was built the same time at the Tower of London. So now we're starting to get into kind of some modern structures that are still standing in London. So you can go visit the Tower of London, but that bridge was later destroyed by a tornado and later a fire. Uh, and then was again rebuilt. So we have a lot of falling and rebuilding. So which falling in particular the song is referencing, I'm not entirely sure because there's a lot. So then finally we're getting into um, what we start referring to as actually the London Bridge. So the old London Bridge or the medieval bridge, it was um, built in 1209. Um, so uh, King John, but I also saw King Henry II uh, rain. And so it was made of stone. Uh, it had 19 narrow arches. It had a chapel um, that was dedicated to Thomas Beckett. 
And it actually ended up crumbling uh, in 1281, 1309, 1425, and 1437. So again, which London Bridge is falling down? Not really clear. Um, but overall, it lasted about 600 years, which is what's referenced in The Prince and the Pauper, including you know repairs on those bridges and other things that get mentioned in The Prince and the Pauper. So this is the bridge that would have been standing at, at that time. Um, so they had gatehouses at both sides uh, and the Northern gatehouse, later it moved to the Southern gatehouse, they would actually display um, heads of the enemies of you know, the crown, the king on spikes to kind of send a message to the people who live there. And that actually wasn't started by Henry VIII, which you kind of think that that would, but that tradition actually existed long before he was there. And some of the pictures or like sketches you can see of what the bridge would have looked like actually show areas where they have those heads on display. Um, so it also had many buildings on it, just as it said in the story. Some of those were as much as seven stories high. Um, and also you can still see some remnants of this original bridge, but uh, it did, you know, kind of fall into disrepair and get destroyed and get replaced by another bridge. So there was another bridge that might be called the New London Bridge. Um, so this was, or sometimes Rennie's Bridge, uh, Rennie's London Bridge might be called that. So it was designed by John Rennie, but actually ended up being built by his son. It was also made of stone. So the last one was built of stone. This one was built of stone. The ones before that might have been made more of like wood or timber. Um, so the stone ones lasted a little bit longer, obviously. Five arches and four piers. It opened in 1831, but as it was very uh, heavily used, it actually began to sink. So they put it up for sale and it was purchased by Robert P. McCullough and was like moved to Lake Havasu City, Arizona. So some rumors say that he actually thought that, you know, kind of showing like, he wasn't very intelligent. He thought he was buying the London Tower Bridge, but that's not really true. But it is a fun story to go along with it. Um, so you can go see it in Arizona to this day. They even have a webcam um, that you can watch it live from a distance. So the new London Bridge is actually now in the United States, which leads us to the London Bridge today. There is still a bridge in London that's called the London Bridge. So we have the London Tower Bridge, but we also have the London Bridge. It was completed in 1972. It is still made of stone with arches. So the last kind of three iterations of the bridge all contain that same general design. And there's not really too much famous about it. I've been there, I've walked across it and I can tell you there's not a whole lot of, um, you know, tourism surrounding this bridge to this day. Uh, but when it was built, it used a cantilever method for construction, which did at the time represent a major post-World War II innovation in bridge building. And obviously they built it pretty well because it hasn't started to sink like the other one did. So that is a very sped up history of the London Bridge. Hopefully you learned something. Have a good rest of your day.